Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. Today I thought we'd make a fun little cane which I've called Dots and Swirls and we'll do some polymer clay earrings. Very very simple, purely just using a cutter to cut out the shape. The cane we're going to make is this one. So I've just taken two triangles of that to make the earrings but of course you know me, I like my kaleidoscopes so if you move it down into our equilateral triangles you can also make these kaleidoscope patterns. This is one that came about as a result of somebody asking me about the covering a goose egg tutorial I did where I just go very fast forward and there's one particular part where I do swirls and dots and she asked if I could do a video along those lines. So I've moved it on a little bit, um, done a bit of experimenting and this is one that I think looks quite good. Now you're never going to get the same thing twice with this which you'll understand when we go through the whole process but it also means you simply can't go wrong. So Fun one, quick and easy one, good for beginners. Let's get started by going through what we're going to need for today's project. The equipment we need for today's project is fairly standard. A polymer clay blade, I will sometimes refer to this as a tissue blade. A craft knife. Some form of blunt-ended needle, knitting needle, cable needle, something along those lines or a similar tool. If you're making earrings, then we're going to need to have something to either pierce it with whilst the clay is still unbaked or drill through after it's baked. A roller, this is just a polymer clay roller. A small sheet of either baking parchment, tracing, wax, greaseproof paper, something like that, just we're going to work on to move our pieces around and slide them around, it makes it easier. If you are making earrings, then some of the little earring findings, I'm just using these um, fish hook type earring findings and then tiny little jump rings and because of that I will also need some little pliers to work, a couple of um, pairs so you can just manipulate the jump rings when you get to that stage. A cutter of your choice, I'm going to go for sort of this elongated teardrop shape for today's earrings. These are available from a lot of cutter um, shops online or locally. The, if you go to the cake making, the icing, sugar craft shops you'll find something like these. This is just a petal from one of those. This one's quite sharp so when I cut down I have just a piece of wood so I can use that to cut down rather than hurt my fingers. If you don't have any cutters then of course you can just make yourself a paper template and just cut round the side of the, temp the paper template instead. When we're cutting down through the clay a piece of cling film or this plastic um, wrap is handy because it helps bevel the edges of the slices as we take them. You can bake your pieces flat or you can bake them on something like this, which is one of the hollow um, bead domes from Sculpey, and I'll put a link to that. Again, if you don't have that, the back of a spoon, a dessert spoon, tablespoon, an old spent light bulb is good, or just any old bowls you can find which have got a nice curves, or you can carefully cut off the bottom of a, an empty drinks can, and as long as you tape the edges to make sure you're not going to cut yourself, then you'll find there's a nice curve on those, so a couple of curves, a couple of cans will give you a couple of nice moulds for your pieces. I'm going to bake on a tile but I'm also going to use this to help roll some nice thin even shaped logs so a tile is handy one that you can actually reach your hands around this is a six inch one which is good just to work on and if you are going to do any kaleidoscoping a measuring sheet is handy and this one is freely available from www.printablepaper.net and I've simply laminated it so I can use it multiple times other than that Whenever I'm baking, I always tent my tile in aluminium foil to protect it should the oven spike during baking. I will have tissues and wet wipes to hand to clean my hands and my equipment as I go along and a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use. So that's all the equipment, so let's move on to the clay we're going to use for today's session. Today's session I am using Fimo Soft, but all well-known brands of polymer clay work well for this technique. I'm using Brilliant Blue, Mint, Aqua, White, and the winds are blue and for the amounts I've got about a third of an ounce of these or about 10 grams, quarter an ounce of the white and half an ounce of the winds are blue. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to split these up like that because we are going to do a Skinner blend with those four colours. Those three are going to keep separate 
and then this one again is going to be kept separate because that's just used as a wrap and it's the dark outer colour. Now you notice I've got a nice variety here from really light tones through to mid and then obviously the dark one I'm using as the wrap. So make sure you've got that with your colour combinations. You can have whatever colour combinations you want on this one. It looks really good fun. Condition all your clay thoroughly. If you're unsure on how to condition polymer clay then I do have a little video with a few hints and tips and techniques on how to do that and I'll put a link to that in the description below this one. But condition them all in these separate amounts and I'm going to put these ones through on setting number three and I'll bring you back when I've got that done. So all the clay is nicely conditioned and I've put these four through on setting number three and these were the two parts of the clay and then the single, the one parts, I've conditioned these as well and rolled them up into little logs about an inch in height. So put those to one side for now and we're going to make a Skinner blend from these four pieces. The end ones cut through in a diagonal, middle ones cut down straight and then just double up our amounts. As you can see I didn't worry about them being completely um, lovely rectangular shapes because we know that's all going to change when you start putting it through the pasta machine. So with your two pieces Keep your diagonal going that way and then just gently press the mint in next, then the aqua and finally the white if you want to. Just give it a little bit of a roll over to make sure that those adhere nicely to each other and then you're simply going to fold it up and because we've now got four layers, we're going to put it through one setting thicker on the pasta machine. So now we're going to put it through on setting number two on mine. If you're unused to Skinner blends, I do have a video on how to do a Skinner blend with a few tips and techniques. And I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So there's the blend done. And I've got it to a width across this way. It's about one, two, three, four, about four and a half or about 12 centimetres wide. Because I want to chop three nice even slices and to do that I made sure that when I put it through the pasta machine when I fold it up each time I made sure I pushed it nice and tight up against one side of the pasta machine we sort of pushed this side in slightly so I kept it to a nice length. I'm also not worried particularly about this bit being rounded because what we can do because this is going to be a fairly uneven cane I can pinch this end and pull that round and pinch this one and pull it around to make it straighter on the end and for what we're doing today that's absolutely fine. So I can now chop it into roughly three equal lengths and the next thing to do is to put our four pieces of the dark clay, so in my case the Windsor Blue, condition this if you haven't done it already and then put it through on the setting, a very thin setting and you want it to be the width of your piece here. So I'm going to do mine on setting number nine. So there we go. So what I'm going to do is put it up and I'm going to turn one of my pieces the other way up. So I'm going to put these down so they're only halfway up on this dark blue. But I say turn one of them the other way up. Because we only want this dark blue to go over half of these lines. If you do it over the whole length, it just creates, it, it's, it's just too much in my opinion. And as you know, I've experimented with this one a couple of times. So I'm now going to take this piece off, but leave it there just for a second. Because with any luck, we can fit our three pieces on and we can now cover them in one layer of the dark as well. So I'm just going to cut down in between to give myself the right width. And now one at a time you can take them up, wrap them in one layer, take off the excess, repeat for the other two. Okay, take all your off cuts off the blue and roll them into a log as well. And we now want to roll all four of these so that their length, the same length as this. I find it easier to do just on the tile, so I'm just going to move that out of the way at the moment, but I'll keep it within spotting distance so I can see the length I need to go to. It's only going to be thin, 
we're just going to roll them out. Now you want this to be as even as possible if you're going to do kaleidoscopes, although if you're doing the earrings then you only ever need the two slices to be the same so it's not so much of a problem. However if you want a tip, if you get yourself a small tile, one that you can hold in your hands relatively easily, you can then use that, the flat side, to roll over your log and you'll get a nice flat log. I'm sure loads of you already know that but in case but just in case someone doesn't. So having got it to the right height I'm going to chop it into three pieces. Oh one thing I should have done first. I don't think I have done yet have I? No. Just chop down in between your slices there so that when you pick these up they are separate. Right. So we can now chop our piece into three. I'm just going to take off any messiness from the end and put one at the top, one at the middle, one at the bottom. And we're now going to repeat for the two other colours and for the dark blue. Same thing, roll it out, right length, chop it into three equal pieces. Okay, now I'm sticking with the um, same colours as I've used for my colour combinations here, but you can of course use different inserts for your dots if you would prefer. Just have an experiment and see what looks good. So same thing, one in the middle, one at the bottom, one at the top, and the last colour one. Same again, bottom, top, middle this time. And then this one I just put a fairly randomly really. So let's put one in there, one in there, oh let's put one at the very top. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to stack one on top of the other. So I'm going to pull this slightly out of the way just for a second and there's there's no rhyme or reason to this, there's no science in it, you just slot it on. These will move around a bit, that's fine, because all you're going to do is you're just going to push down and push them into anywhere that sort of feels where it should go. So that one goes like that and then this one on top. There we go, and shove him down in there and shove him down in there. And then you're going to pick up the whole stack. And with the non um, dot side, push that in and create a sort of a folded, I'm going to try and make sure we're doing the same each side, a sort of folded triangle, push the bits up slightly so it's not completely down. So you can see there I've curled these bottom bits up slightly, but I'm pushing it down until I'm going to force it into a triangle. And then all we're going to do is reduce this down just a little bit to start with if you're going to do the earrings, because you want to make sure that your slices, we're going to take two slices and they need to be of height that two slices will take the size of our cutter. So I can go a little bit smaller than this, but not too much smaller. If you're doing a kaleidoscope, you want to make more um, of the slices and try and make sure that these stay nice and flat. So for instance here you can see I've got the blue here, but it's gone more up against the um, blue there, so you can just pull it over slightly to even that out. Same here, so I might sort of just pull that over slightly to even it out. But if you're just doing the things like the earrings, so all you need is two slices at a time, then you really don't need to worry with that. So I'm just reducing it down into a triangular shape because that suits the shape that my earring cutter, that sort of teardrop shape is going to be. But again, if you're doing a different shape or a different cutter, just reduce your cane to the size that you particularly need. And all we're going to do now is simply chop it in half and see what we've got pattern-wise. So when you pick it up and put it together, you're going to have some lovely patterns. And of course you've got three different ways of putting it together to give you a different pattern and all you need to do is make sure that it's the right size to take your cutter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a couple of um, thin slices of this. I'm going to put one piece on one side because I will make that smaller and kaleidoscope it for you and I'll come onto that in just a second so you can see the pattern in full. But because we're doing earrings today with this piece you can either take thick slices of this and put the two together so that you have the pattern on both sides of your earrings or if you want to keep more of the pattern then get some scrap clay so some of the distorted bits for instance on the end of this 
and you could put that through on a thinnish setting of your pasta machine so you, or roll it so you've got a nice square and then you take thinner slices of these and put those on this backing clay but for today I'm going to take thick slices so I'm just going to chop two even but fairly thick slices. Now I need to think about which way I'm going to put them together. And what I'm going to do is I am going to hold up my cutter at the time to see which pattern I prefer as I move it around. Because obviously depending on the cutter you might like one better than the other. Okay, I've decided on putting the two blue sides together. So I'm going to put them together so that they nicely match on there. And then with my little with the cable needle, I'm going to very gently roll them together. Flip over the other side because you need to make sure the join on the other side is nicely joined together as well. Roll over the whole thing. And by rolling it, you tend to make it just slightly larger. So again, check that it is the right size. And now immediately, I'm going to take two more slices because I'm going to do the other earring at the same time because you want to make sure if you're doing a pair of earrings they're as near as you can get them to being the same. So same two slices. Now I know which way I'm putting them together. And I want this to be the reverse. So it needs to be that way around as being my top side. So same as before, just put them down very gently, join them together. Do the same on the reverse. A little bit of a roll. We'll pop him back on that side. I will usually put them pretty close together so that I can see what I'm doing and make sure that they're as even as I can get them. Then I'll take a little bit of the cling film plastic wrap, put that down on top and then carefully place my cutter on the first piece. When I know roughly where I'm going, I will press it lightly with my hands. Because these are double side, sided cutters, I don't want to hurt my hands, so I'm just taking a piece of um, wood, just a block of wood, and pressing down. I'm then going to reverse my cutter, because even though this should be symmetrical, it may not be. Put it on there, and then very carefully look down, check where all the points are, see if I can get it as close as I can to a match. Same thing. Press down, pull the excess away. I'll just make sure I've got no messiness on the edges. And then with the thin beading needle, you can drill holes afterwards, but I'm just going to very gently put that through, give it a twist to make the hole slightly wider, same place on the other one. Find whatever you're planning on baking on and I'm just going to put these on the largest one of this. Bend it gently down and then bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And apart from finishing them, either sanding or polishing or 
adding whatever finish you want and then adding our findings, that is your earrings done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce the rest of the cane, get that into the kaleidoscope patterns just to show you what it looks like so you can do something from that instead and I'll bring you back when I've done that. So I've reduced the cane down till it's the same on all three sides, a nice triangular cane. Cut one end neat, so we, and we can see there we've got a nice equilateral triangle and then you need six thin slices to make one hexagon and I'm actually going to take 18 slices to show you the three different patterns that we have. So having cut your slices, just take them up and open two at a time, try and match them up. You can either start working on a scrap of baking sheet or just keep them in your hands, whichever is easiest for you. Take a third piece, match it up. If it's not quite level, which isn't there, take the blunt side of your blade, being careful not to hurt your fingers, and just push those round to the end with a flat side and then repeat, making sure you're going to match up these two sides with your final piece. So I know that piece is going to match there, so I need to add a piece onto this side. Same thing again, very carefully, not cutting your fingers, push the other sides up so you get a flat piece and then Bending that away, you can carefully put your pieces together. Persuade any areas that are open to join together using the edge of your needle. Once they're more or less there, and with your roller, roll your piece in. Again with the blunt end of your blade, just neaten off the outsides. And then you can do whatever you need to do with your pattern. And there are the three kaleidoscope patterns you get from your one piece. When your pieces are finished and out of the oven and baked and cooled, you need to decide whether to do any finishing techniques, whether you want to varnish them, um, add any resin finish, sand and polish, whatever you want to do. For these ones, I'm literally going to leave them exactly as they are. So I'd already put the hole in first, so all I need to do is get the little jump rings. And I've got two different sizes. So one size, because I've put the holes a fair way away from the point. So find where the gap is in the jump ring and then with two pairs of pliers, you simply open it up like that. Put your jump ring through the earring. Close it up again. Wiggle it a bit to make sure you can not, wiggle it a bit to make sure you've got a nice tight closure. Turn it round so that the join is actually inside the polymer clay bit. Exactly the same with the next one. Find where the opening is. One direction with one pliers, one direction with the other. That pops in there. And then you need to figure out which way the hook would hang, so it would hang down that way. Pop that through and round. Close the jump ring up. And there you are. Your earring is ready to go. And there's the pair. So what I'll do now is I'll just take you through a couple of other colour combinations that I've done and then that's it. So here are the two finished earrings. Now as you know I've done nothing to these, not even sanded or polished, just exactly as they were. If you want to varnish, I've just added a little bit of varnish to this pair and all of the brands of polymer clay do their own varnish. And these ones I've added the Deep Shine from Teresa Salgado and the Tiny Pandora. I'll put a link to those underneath if you fancied getting yourself some of that. For this colour combination I used apple green, emerald green, pacific blue and then the white and some black for the outliner. 
and on this one I used the sunflower yellow, tangerine, Indian red, obviously the white again to add in the Skinner blend and then this was the royal violet as the darker outer colour. Here are the other colours also kaleidoscoped and as you can see although they're all different there's slight similarities between them so don't worry about it not coming out exactly the same you'll get the rough sort of difference in the patterns but either way I think this is a really nice fun one to do. So there we are that's that tutorial finished I hope you had fun and made your own lovely dots and swirls of polymer clay earrings. As always, thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. That's it for now. I'll see you next time. Bye.